Kechu Betel was an Ethiopian noble woman who, together with her husband, Emperor Menelik II, ruled Ethiopia from 1889 to 1913. She is remembered for her resistance against and victory over the Italian colonial forces and her political power at the royal court. She is the one who chose the area of Ethiopia's present-day capital city and named it Addis Ababa. Kechu Betel was born in Semin, North Gondar, Ethiopian Empire. Scholarly consensus is that she was born at about 1851. Tetu's father, Ras Betel Haile Mariam, was part of the ruling family of Semin that claimed to be descendants of the Solomonic dynasty through Emperor Susi Nyos. Tetu's uncle was the Amhara warlord Wub Haile Mariam who governed the Semin and Tigray princedom. Her ancestry hailed from a lot of places the north, including Yeju, Semin, and Tigray. She was raised in an aristocratic family. She was church-educated and is said to have excelled to the heights of composing traditional oral, cane poetry. After four failed marriages to important personages, she married Menelik when he was the ruler of Shua. When Menelik became the emperor of Ethiopia in 1889, she became the empress of Ethiopia two days later. With the regal title of Edij Techu Betel, Light of Ethiopia, it is believed that she was taught diplomacy, politics, and economics. Additionally, she understood a language once exclusive to the Ethiopian Orthodox liturgy. Empress Techu was known to play the begina, which is a ten-string instrument. Her other activities included playing centere, Ethiopian chess, and an interest writing poetry. Historically, her family is claimed to have a ruling foothold in the northern region of the country. Such places include Semin, Begemeter, Lasta, Yeju, and Wello. Her aristocratic lineage dates back to sending from the daughter of Emperor Susneos. Her great-grandfather, Ras Jeber of Semin, ruled for 44 years during the period known as the Zemin Mesifint or the Era of the Princes. His fame was acknowledged through two measures. He was responsible for making the communities west of Gondar pay taxes in gold, as well as treating his subjects so well providing an ample amount of food and drink so that they no longer needed to farm to sustain themselves. Her grandfather, Dejazmik Haile Mariam Jeber, also held a respected title. He governed Simin, where his children Wub, Betel, and Merso were born. Additionally, her uncle Dagosmic Wub followed in the family's footsteps by also acquiring a high position in the region. As the half-brother of Tetu's father, Dagosmic Wub was responsible for ruling the Tigray province. Tetu had two brothers Raswell Betel and Entemru Betel and two sisters. Tetu Betel and Menelik's marriage was a powerful political union. As both parties brought alliances in northern and southern Ethiopia, respectively, to the table, once the pair became emperor and empress, they forged more allegiances with the region's various rulers, partly through political prowess and partly through military force. However, Techu Betel also made sure that she wasn't just the emperor's wife, but was involved in most political decision-making, diplomacy, and military campaigns. Historians say that she was seen as Menelik's equal and often took a tougher stance on matters than her husband. Empress Techu Betel understood internal and foreign politics. She counseled the emperor on the devious notions of the colonialists. The emperor consulted her before he passed a decision on key governance issues. The diary of Augusto Salimbini, an Italian engineer who was part of the delegation for the treaty, provides evidence that Empress Techu played a significant role in the process of unification of Ethiopia. She clarified issues for Menelik, and she had an individuality and warmth as a woman that was rarely seen by foreigners. Combined with her compassionate nature was her passion and resolve to safeguard her country's independence and history. Of all the good qualities for which Empress Techu is credited, her dedication to the emperor during the crisis that followed the dispute over the Wichel Treaty stands out. The supposed Italo-Ethiopian Treaty of Friendship and Commerce was discovered too. Include in Article 17 the intention of Italy to make Ethiopia a protectorate, 
This infuriated Tai Chu during the course of the deliberations. The Empress demonstrated considerable indignation and determination to oust the Italians of Ethiopian territories. As tension mounted, the Empress persuaded the Emperor to declare war against Italy. This culminated in the 1896 Battle of Adwa. Teichu is acknowledged to have wielded considerable political power, both before and after she and Menelik were crowned Emperor and Empress in 1889. She led the conservative faction at court that resisted the modernists and progressives, who wanted to develop Ethiopia along western lines and bring modernity to the country. According to the historians, she was always consulted by the emperor prior to making important decisions. Thus, Empress Teichu was a key player in the conflict over the Treaty of Wuchel with Italy, which she tore up. Empress Teichu was the first to motivate the hesitant emperor and other men to stand up against the Italians. Deeply suspicious of European intentions towards Ethiopia, she was a key player in the conflict over the Treaty of Wuchel with Italy, in which the Italian version made Ethiopia an Italian protectorate, while the Americ version did not do so. The Empress held a hard line against the Italians and when talks eventually broke down and Italy invaded the empire from its Eritrean colony. She marched north with the emperor and the imperial army, commanding a force of cannoneers at the historic Battle of Adwa that resulted in a humiliating defeat for Italy in March 1896. This victory was the most significant of any African army battling European colonialism. Menelik, who often prevaricated and postponed unpleasant decisions by answering yes tomorrow, found it useful to have his wife be in a powerful enough position to say absolutely not to people, and issues he just did not want to personally offend or refuse. Teichu Betel was renowned for her leading role in the war against Italy that culminated in the Battle of Adwa. Teichu is said to have commanded 5,000 infantry and 600 cavalry in the fight against the Italians, who were trying to colonize Ethiopia. Teichu had vehemently opposed deals with Italy and the Treaty of Wuchel, which effectively made Ethiopia an Italian protectorate on paper. When Menelik and Teichu finally rode into battle against the Italians, Teichu played a crucial role in strategizing and leading her troops to the front. She scored a significant victory at an Italian-built fort in Mechel, where she defeated the Italians by cutting off their water supply. When Menelik's health began to decline around 1906, Teichu began to make decisions on his behalf angering her rivals for power through her appointment of favorites and relatives to most of the positions of power and influence. As a means to curb her family's political influence at court, Menelik selected Sabla Wangel Hailu as the heir, presumptive Lai Jiasu's wife, as her family had no ties to Teichu's. Teichu was widely resented for her alleged Gondoran's xenophobia and nepotism, and the nobility of Sho and Tigre. Along with the Wallow relatives of Lai Jiasu conspired to remove her from state responsibility. In 1910, she was forced from power and a regency under Ras Tessima Nadu took over. Instructed to limit herself to the care of her stricken husband, Teichu faded from the political scene. Teichu and Menelik did not have any children. Menelik died in 1913 and was succeeded by his grandson from a daughter of a previously Azan, Lajiasu. Teichu was banished to the old palace at Entodo, next to the St. Mary's church she had founded years before and where her husband had been crowned emperor. While some believe Teichu may have played a part in the plot that eventually removed Emperor Iasuvi from the throne in 1916, Replacing him with Empress Zadi Chu, the price for Zadatu's elevation was a divorce from Teitu's nephew Ras Gugsawel, who became governor of Begender. Zadi Chu, Menelik I's daughter by yet another previous marriage, had always been close to Empress Teichu and invited Teichu to live with her. Although Teichu declined, she resumed advising rulers in a modest way to quote Chris Proudy. Count Pietro Antonelli, the lead negotiator, is said to have remarked, Menelik is playing games on me by giving up his regal authority to a woman. 
To this, the Empress issued a retort. My womanliness and your manliness is going to be tested on the battlefield. Do not absent yourself. The Empress seems to be the main architect of the battle as she had her own contingent of close to 5,000 troops and 100 women, including Princess Zhu Dai Tmenelik. She took command of provisional and medical operations during the battle and positioned herself as a powerful moral force. Most importantly, she commanded operation to prevent Italian military access to all sources of potable water. This strategy worked in favor of the emperor and the Ethiopians prevailed in the battle. In the event of the Italian second coming 1935 Empress Menin, Spouse of Emperor Haile Selassie I admitted the exemplary role of Empress Teichu when she said, I shall do it as the august Empress Teichu did in her time. Empress Teichu not only excelled in matters of war, but also in times of peace as a champion of development. She founded Addis Ababa, the capital city of Ethiopia, and named it. She built the Atodo Mariam Church, which still stands to date. She gathered homeless orphans and educated them to be deacons, priests, and raised many others to several prestigious government positions. She erected the first hotel, Edij Techu Hotel, after her name that stands till today. She also established an association to promote agriculture and trade among many other initiatives. Zulid, P. 30. Emperor Haile Selassie I indicated in his memoir that Menelik's cabinet members resented Empress Tata's handling and running all major functions of government and plotted to overthrow her. The interregnum between the avowed passing of Emperor Menelik and the ascension to power of Emperor Haile Selassie was full of intrigues and conspiracies. Empress Teichu struggled to maintain balance between the feuding groups, with the hope to help Princess Zhu Daitu ascend the throne. But she finally was unable to withstand the crafts of her enemies and succumbed. Teichu lived out the next few years at the old palace next to the Entoto Mariam church overlooking Addis Ababa. She requested permission to go to Gondar in November 1917 to end her days, but was refused. She died three months later. She is buried next to her husband at the Tika Negist Badala Mariam Monastery in Addis Ababa. Count Pietro Antonelli, who once derided and resented the Empress, because of her intransigence during the negotiations of the Wichel Treaty, wrote of her. The Empress, like all other Ethiopian women, is brave. She had a strong character, sometimes haughty, and is interesting appearance. Her look is commanding and at the same time has fine signs some. She is a great lady, who perhaps in another milieu would have been a Christina of Sweden or a Catherine the Great. Powerful or controversial, Empress Teichu rose to the occasion and helped lay the foundation for a modern Ethiopia that is, today. As such, her legacy has become a significant part of the contemporary Ethiopian history.